What's up guys and welcome back. We are going to be building another very cool little MITX gaming PC. And for this, we are going to be using the Cooler Master Box NR200P. This little case right here. Now, I've heard so much about this case and how versatile it is to build in and just the amount of room and for an MITX case, you are able to fit so much into it and still have a very powerful PC. So I wanted to give this a go. Now, I won't be going all out and building the best of the best, but I will be building a very decent gaming PC. As you can see in front of me here, these are the parts we're going to be using with a Ryzen 7 7700. Let's jump straight into this build and let's just see how well this comes out. back up. The heat tank for this must align with these holes. Now would be a good time to go ahead and install some thermal paste. Now for the AMD CPUs, all you really need is a nice dollop in the center and it's going to cover the entire CPU. Just give it a nice dollop like so and that's going to suffice. We'll now install our CPU cooler. Ensure that this side of your CPU cooler faces this side. Align your screws here with the thread. Aligning our thread with our screw and fastening it down. Just a few more turns and here we are cooler completely installed. Now for our fan, we're going to be using the one that they have supplied and because this is a thicker fan, a standard fan, not a super slim, you will be using the bigger fans. You have two sets, the thinner set and the larger set, so use the larger one as your fan is the standard fan and ensure your direction of flow is down towards the motherboard. Then simply clamp it on. The same to this side here, align it in the center, clamp it down. There we go, perfect. Then all that's really left is to plug in your PWM power for your fan and that plugs into CPU fan number one right here and there you are. Tuck it underneath so that it is hidden and that's our CPU cooler completely installed, cable tucked away underneath. Here we have the Cooler Master MITX Masterbox NR200P. Like I said, this is a very common MITX case. A lot of people are using this for the MITX builds just due to the simplicity and what you can fit inside this cool little case. Now this is the accessory box that it comes with and it comes with two fans with um, blade protectors as well as a PCIe riser cable and all your screws, nuts, bolts, everything that you need. What I really like about this case is the fact that it offers a tempered glass panel if you want to be able to see everything inside your build. So right now we have two mesh panels on either side. However, obviously, if you are having trouble with temps, then it'd probably be better off just leaving the mesh on here. It really just comes down to how you want your PC to look and if you care more about aesthetics over performance. Let's take this apart. I've just gone ahead and removed the thumb screw at the back here. And then what you want to do is just simply pull up, just like that. And that will release this top panel. And from here, you just have to push this out, lift it up. Same to this side here, push out and lift. 
And you also have these huge dust filters inside here, so that helps for controlling the dust. This takes an SFX power supply, so lucky enough we have one of those right here, so that's great. And you're able to install more fans on this bracket right here if you wanted to. But we are going to be installing a normal GPU, so we will probably be able to install fans here. So to remove this panel here, you've got two screws just here. We have to remove them, lift and slide out. Now we can install our motherboard straight in. And let me show you what I mean by it's able to accompany such a high CPU cooler. Check this out, guys. You still have clearance of about 30 millimeters. That allows you to install pretty much a standard dual tower if you really wanted to, and it wouldn't be a problem at all. Something like the Thermorite Peerless Assassin would even fit in this, so that's great. With our motherboard in, let's go ahead and install the four screws that retains the motherboard. Let's go into our kit box. Straight away, we've got our fan splitter cable and our two 120 millimeter fans with blade protectors. Of course, your PCIe riser cable or your other parts that you're going to need. And this one just goes in the top left hand corner facing the motherboard. Your screws are here. One, two, three, and four. You've got a USB 3.0 cable that plugs in here. Once it's lined up, just push it in. There we go. Next, we've got our all-in-one cable. We're not going to be able to use this due to how this motherboard is set out. So what we need to do is separate it from this. It's just not going to fit in between where this plugs into. Let's remove our power supply bracket so we can plug in these cables. Two screws. Two. And then simply lift and pull out. There we are. Power LED, power switch, and then reset. So our front panel cables all plugged in. Our HD audio is in the bottom corner here. Perfect. So let's put in our power supply now and push it on through. Like so. Right. Power supply in, stand it up. These hooks here will hook in. You can now screw it back in. See here, if you really wanted to, you could even go up one more mount if you wanted so that you could install the SFXL, which is a little bit bigger for the SFX power supply. It's easier if you just remove the CPU cooler and don't install it yet until you have routed all your cables. So that's what I'm going to do now because it's just a bit too hard to plug in all these cables in between here. You've got all this room to reinstall it anyway, so it's not a big deal. Let's remove our CPU cooler. As you can see, now we've got all this room here. So I'm also going to remove my RAM, plug in all my cables first and route the cables. Then I will reinstall everything. There we are. That's plugged in. Go ahead and use your Velcros here to tidy up your cables here. All right, here's our CPU, CPU cable. Honestly, this just made it a lot easier. So I do strongly recommend if you're going to be using an air cooler for this, wait until you have installed the power supply as well as plug in all your front panel cable, CPU cable, ATX cable. Then after that, go ahead and install your CPU cooler as you do still have a lot of room for it. You can also remove your front panel that just comes right off like that. And as you can see, everything is pretty accessible here. And if you look on the front of the case right here, you can install two 2.5 inch SSDs right here. Uh, you can put one there and also one there. It even shows a pump logo here. So I'm pretty sure you could install a pump if you wanted to use liquid cooling for this. And what you want to do is route all your cables down the bottom here because you've got these velcro straps down the bottom which allows you to route your cables and then keep it nice and tidy we will be installing the graphics card straight in like so and plug it straight into this we won't be using the riser cable for a vertical mount it's just a lot easier to do it this way and i just feel that it's just going to get a lot more cooler air and form a lot better if i just installed it the standard way and also my gpu cables here three eight pin connectors are going to be very easy to plug into the graphics card if i just install it the normal way but if you wanted to show off your gpu more and do a vertical mount then of course you could do that you could also install a rear fan here you could use a 9mm fan. All right, so now we're just going to go ahead and install our cooler. When you remove your cooler, you want to make sure that you always clean off the thermal paste that's already on there. Even though it's not used yet, it's just you want to get into the practice of always removing any old thermal paste and apply a new set. A nice pea size, just like that. And then grab our cooler with our heat pipes here facing towards the VRMs. So go ahead and line up your screw holes. All right, and then you put your screwdriver through here like we did before and then just fasten it until it stops. Now with that done, go ahead and grab your fan. Ensure that your cable is on the top side. Clamp it down. Make sure it is centered. Clip it straight down onto the cooling fins. Do the same to the other side and just clamp it down. And as for your PWM connector for your fan, go ahead and plug it into CPU fan number one, which is the one on the right just here. Align your tab here. What we want to do now is get our case ready with all our fans and then we can install our GPU right after. We'll need the top piece and then we need to grab our 
allocated fans for here. And we're going to put this as exhaust. It just simply pushes straight in. So all you're going to do now is these screws here, you're just going to push straight through here and they're going to lock into place. Just like this. Very, very easy way to do this. Just line it up and push it straight on. Look how easy that was, guys. Just plug these in first, like so. Just like this. So let's just pull these cables out, sit this back on, line it up and push it straight back on. If you take a look at the clearance here, it kind of makes sense why they made these, these fan protectors here because if you had anything that was just touching, it's probably going to get in the way of the fan blade. Tuck this down the side like so, and then zip tie the rest there. And there we are, let's zip tie that down. Let's zip tie this here. Tidy up that cable right there. Everything is hidden pretty well. Nothing's in the way of obstructing any of the fans. There's no zip ties going into it that will make it rattle. CPU coolers on. So now we can basically just install our GPU now. Here we have the Gigabyte 7800 XT. This is a great mid-tier graphics card. Future modern games that are gonna come out are going to be using a lot more VRAM. So you do want a, a graphics card that's going to offer you more than just the 12 gigabyte standard. You want something with at least 16 gigabyte VRAM. Let's just open this up. Great that it's only a two slot card. Pull out these dust protectors and it only has two eight pins. So that's great as well. Radeon RX 7800 XT, 16 gigabyte VRAM. It is a pretty decent card, not exactly the smallest, but a very nice mid-sized card that's going to fit a majority of cases, whether it be MITX, mid-tower. Let's remove one of these as we're not going to need it at all. When this sits inside like so, let's remove two slots. Take those two slots out. Look at that, it just fits guys. Perfect fitment, honestly. Get one side in, push it on over. Now, when you do this, it's also very important that your GPU slot slots into these tabs here. And then once they sit in, you're able to push your GPU straight in and it will click into place, just like that. Perfect. Then go ahead and grab your screws again and reinstall it. Now with your PCIe cables, go ahead and start them off with the tab on the bottom so that when you go to plug it in, they end up on the top, which is how your ports are assembled. Align it and plug it straight in. And Perfect, look at that. And as for the extra slack, we can just fold it over and push it straight in. And we put a zip tie around it so that all you're really going to see are the cables bent over like that. GPU installed, ready to go. All right, so now just for the sake of it, I wanna show you just how you go about installing SSDs or a HDD for this case. If you go ahead and take a look at this piece here on top of the PSU, you're going to see a total of six round holes. And what you can do is install a 3.5 inch hard drive here if you want it. And how you do that is you push in these rubber grommets. Usually you can get away with just four. Then you install these screws, which then screw into the hard drive. And then that simply pushes straight into the rubber grommets. So it kind of makes it like a tallest design. And the rubber grommet holds the hard drive in place. There isn't any screws that fix it to the actual uh, cage of the power supply it relies on the rubber grommet to hold these screws in place when they're installed into the hard drive. Same thing for the SSD. They give you a total of 12 of these, so you use four for each. Now, as you can see, I've already installed four here, but I'm also going to install the other four here. All right, so you can install an SSD there and an SSD there, but only the seven millimeter, 2.5 inch SSD like this. All right, just like that. One more there. Then, what you need to do now is just like you would on a hard drive, you install these four screws into these screw holes, like so. Now they don't have to be tightened ridiculously, just so that it sits in and allows you to push it into the rubber grommets. Now these screws, there are two sizes. There's a thinner thread and then a thicker thread. The thicker thread is for the HDDs and the thinner thread is for the SSDs. Once you have the four screws installed into your SSD like this, push it straight into the rubber grommet, like so. And that's how your SSD installs. Then go ahead and grab your cable and plug it in. Be very careful, don't have too much tension on the cables because the SSD ports are very easy to snap. Just be aware of that. Let's go ahead and give it some power and turn it on. And just like that, it comes to life. Our PC has successfully booted, so we pretty much know everything is in order. We can cut off all the extra zip ties and pretty much rebuild the case and we are pretty much done, guys. Now we're going to run a couple of games just for a benchmark, with some Cinebench benchmarks, just so you guys get a better idea of how this performs, whether you're using it for multitasking, workloads, or just straight PC gaming. There is our PC booted, ready to go. Remove everything so we can cut all the extra zip ties off. Grab our snips. Okay, we'll just dangle this here for a second. Extra ones here as well, cut them off. Here for the GPU cable. We didn't have to use many zip ties here because of how everything was routed. Now, of course, your cable management could be a little bit better, but as it stands right now, I think it's pretty good. 
just the way it stands and we don't have to worry too much about cable management because it's pretty much done. Our front case will simply just go back on, they, they clip on with these black clips here and then you've got these round nipples that it sits in and you just push them straight back on. As for this panel here, if you wanted to, you could go ahead and install a couple of fans. So now you've got two fans up the top that will act as exhaust and then you can use two fans here, you can use either 140 fans or 120 fans, but you'll only be able to use two of them. And I can also see here that you could even install a HDD, a hard drive on this right here. The way this PC case is designed, you're still able to put so much storage in this little MITX case. So I can really understand why this is one of the most common MITX cases that we're building. It's just so versatile and there's just so much room for expansion within this tiny little case. And you know what? It can even look amazing as well. It's just to help with more cooling because you definitely want that being that this case is just so compact you don't have much room for the pc to breathe so we definitely want to help that out as much as we can i don't think you can install any fans on the bottom here not even super slim ones but let me know what you guys think if you have installed super slim fans on the bottom using the tempered glass panel we really need to consider whether or not uh, putting two fans here is really going to help or not because we already have the cpu fan that's here that's going to pull in as much cool air as it can from the sides from the bottom it's going to do the best that it can do we can help it out by installing a couple more fans so, you know, it really is up to you whether or not you're going to do that in the end. I will show you how it's done and you can decide for yourself whether or not you want to go about doing it this way as well. With the mesh panels installed, you definitely have a PC case that breathes extremely well. Slide this back in and push it back on just like that. And that is our entire PC put back together. Look at just how small this is, guys. It's so compact. It's absolutely ridiculous. It fits so much in this tiny little PC case that I really am amazed at just how well thought out this entire case was and honestly the v2 edition must be that much better because from what i have seen they've also added a type c port which is just a bonus nowadays all new pc cases should come standard with a type c port just because it has that extra speed for transfer speeds and all that let's put on our tempered glass one and see just how well it looks the panels are definitely interchangeable because they are the exact same size for both sides i could just switch them out like so you've now gone from an all mesh MITX case to one that has a tempered glass panel to show off your internals of your PC build. Now personally I love aesthetics over performance but that really comes down to you in the end whether you prefer to have your PC shown off like this or if you just want performance over anything else then I think the mesh panel would be a better fit for you if you only care about performance because it's definitely going to allow your PC to breathe a lot better as well. We'll see how it looks with two more fans. Obviously it's going to cover the top portion of your build but that's okay because what you want is for the fan to bring in more air. All right, so as you can see here, this is pretty much our final result. Our GPU is pretty much level. And these are the two fans that I installed. We can slide it on in. You've got your two 120 millimeter fans here. You've got this cable here that goes to the two front ARGB fans and all the other cables are just tucked in behind there. We've got our 2.5 inch SSD right here. We've got our 90 millimeter exhaust fan, our 120 air cooler. Pretty much, this is the way it's going to be finished. Then the tab goes on the outside there. You line this up with the screw holes, grab your two screws, line that up and screw it in. Now obviously if you were to use the mesh front panel here, which pretty much looks exactly the same as the mesh panel on the other side, like so, it would breathe a whole lot better. But you know, I am personally more into aesthetics than anything else, but obviously if I feel that the case is getting a bit too hot or the components are getting a bit too hot, then I'll just change it to the mesh panel. And now we can install this tempered glass panel that they have also given us as part of the accessories. Line up the slot and push down and push it in, just like that. And that's how our PC is going to look from this side here. You can see the Gigabyte logo right there. The GPU fits perfectly. Thankfully, the 7800 XT is just a two slot card and the thickness of it is just perfect. The two 120 millimeter ARGB fans here just gives it that gorgeous look, especially with the 90 millimeter fan at the back as well. So all in all, this build came out looking absolutely fantastic. I really, really love it. I can really understand why so many people have option to go for this case to do an MITX building because it is just so versatile, so compact, and you're able to fit some amazing parts into this small little form factor PC case. I have to say, I really do love it. I love the way this whole build came together, the simplicity of the build, the space that you have, and just overall, a great looking PC. Attention, we have an escape patient. Dresses like a bat. Oh, oh, oh. what an idiot. Should be considered cartoon and dangerous. You okay, buddy? Don't let him hit you.
Target area marked. You're full hot. My magic is useless against the Black Breath, and there's no way around it. Odin saw to that long ago. What are you doing here? Making sure you can finish your journey. That's the tower. That's our tower. Before Gaul destroyed it years ago.
And well, that brings us to the end of this video. I really hope that gives you a better idea of how the Ryzen 7 7700 paired with an RX 7800 XT performs in 1440p. Obviously, you can still use this for amazing 1080p performance. Just also be aware that in some cases, it will perform better in 1440p just due to the nature of the build and the resolution that you're running. Everything plays a part in trying to reach that optimal frame rate. In all my benchmarks, I always try to use FSR 2.1 or 3.0. It just gives you that excellent performance boost just like for nvidia you use dlss and of course let me know what you guys think in the comment section would you have done something differently would you have used a different case i would love to know your thoughts in the comment section so until next time i really hope you got something out of this video and if you did don't forget to like share comment subscribe and i'll see you guys in the next video this is mike with mikey's vlogs signing off i'll see you in the next one guys